Hi, I'm Chelsea Kogan. I'm the museum manager at Historic Westville. Today I'm going to be talking about Dr. Lewis Pollen. He was the builder and the original practitioner at our doctor's office on site. This will be part of a series I'm going to do about 19th century medicine. Lewis Pollen, according to his tombstone, was born in Bridgeton, New Jersey on September 11th, 1821 and died January 22nd, 1878. There is a discrepancy on the year of his birth as the 1860 U.S. Census says that he is 35. This means he would have been born around 1825. It was not uncommon to not have the exact day of birth or even the correct year one was born in during the 19th century. Buried next to him is his wife, Clementina G., born January 3rd, 1828, and died March 18th, 1899. They are buried in the Fort Gaines Cemetery in southwest Georgia. Dr. Pollen graduated in 1843 from Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia, a school for surgery. Out of 341 students originally enrolled in his medical class, only 41 graduated. School records state that he lived in Florida. It was common for Southern students that wanted to become doctors to go up North for their training and set practice back in the South once they had completed their studies. On May 11, 1845, the First Baptist Church of Fort Gaines was established, with Lewis Pollen as one of its 14 charter members. Our medical office was also built in Fort Gaines, Georgia in the same year, next to the Clay County Courthouse. He would have seen patients here, as well as gone on house visits. The image on screen is of a Georgia militia property tax record for 1855. Dr. Lewis Pollen is listed on the fourth row. The first column says poles. In mid-19th century Georgia, men between the ages of 21 and 60 had to pay a poll or head tax in order to vote. After the Civil War, these poll taxes were changed in the South to make it next to impossible for African American men to vote. Caucasian women wouldn't receive the right to vote until 1920, with many women of color effectively not being able to vote until after the Civil Rights Movement. Pollen is listed as paying this tax. This record also lists him as a professional, with one sheep killed by dogs in the past 12 months, one child between ages of 6 and 18, two hands employed between ages 15 and 55, as well as one between age 55 and 65. In 1855, he owned 104 acres, the least of anyone else on the page, and lived in Clay County. His land was valued at $3,500, or about $103,839 today. On the next page, it also lists that he owned three people. Since enslaved people were treated as property, their worth is listed. They are put down as being $5,200, which would be about $154,275 today. According to the 1860 census, the names of three men that were living with the family were Albert Smith, age 18, a clerk, William M. Davis, age 31, Mish Baptist clergy, I'm not 100% sure what mish means. I'm guessing it's either short for missionary or some sort of pastor. And Isaac W. Christian, age 22, lawyer. The census also puts Pollen as a physician with two children, Anna Pollen, age 10, and James E. Pollen, age 8. In this application for a veteran headstone in 1935, the documentation states Pollen served in the Confederate Army from 1861 through the end of the Civil War. He is listed as a surgeon, and his company or regiment is listed as Cotton Planters Hospital at Savannah, Georgia Guards and other parties. Historic Westville has several copies of letters he sent to his wife while he was away. In the 1870 census, Lewis Pollen is listed as being a druggist. A druggist is an early form of pharmacist, so he would sell and craft medicines for his community. Up on the screen is an advertisement for a uterine medicine that Pollen sold in his medical office. This ad was in the Weekly Times and Sentinel in Columbus and was printed October 10, 1854. The 1870 census also shows that the household consisted of Lewis and his wife, whose occupation is listed as keeping house, their daughter Annie, occupation at home, son James, occupation attends school, son Lewis, no occupation, as well as domestic servant Mary Smith, who was an African American woman with a three year old son Thomas who is listed as being mulatto. John Barbary, age 18, clerk and store, also lived with them or on their property. The Pollen's son named James is listed as being 10 here and 8 in the 1860 census, 10 years previously. 
While it could be incorrect record keeping, it was also common for families to rename younger children after older siblings that passed away. And my gut feeling says that it's probably this rather than incorrect record keeping. Dr. Pollan practiced his craft in the office until his death. His legacy went on through descendants who also practiced medicine, including one of the best known and most influential physicians in the United States during the 1940s, Dr. James Edgar Pollan, who was President FDR's Atlanta internist and was presented with the Presidential Medal of Merit in 1947. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like us on Facebook for more updates, and we hope to see you in the village very soon.